this is Reflex Images. This is a post time I've seen. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And also turn on the notification icon. If you already subscribed, I will come back. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how I came about this background, how I did the manipulation from A to Z. So here's the before of the picture and here is what we turned the picture into. So without further ado, let's jump into action. The first thing we need to do is to open our picture up in Photoshop. So I'll be closing this reference right now. I'm going to close this up right now. To my file manager, go to my file manager. I'm going to drag the picture into my Photoshop. So once it loads up, the first thing I need to do is to do all the basic adjustment setting from the overlay, from changing the highlight, the contrast. You all know how to do that. And if you don't know how to do that, watch my other videos that are going to show you how I do my basic adjustment, how I balance my lighting camera. Roll. So that being said, right now, the next thing we need to do is to open our picture in Photoshop and wait for it to load up. So this is going to be very, very fast. Unlike our other videos that will be cleaning all the backdrop, this is going to be a smooth sail all through. So the next thing we need to do, we need to retouch our picture. So the software is in retouching this picture. I don't use Photoshop to retouch my picture these days. I use Evoto AI. So once I use the Evoto AI to retouch my picture, it's going to take me less than two minutes. Even though I'm to edit about 10 pictures or 12 pictures, I can batch edit everything all at once with just clicking on the slider as you see I'm doing right now. And you also want to make purchase of a Voto AI and also want to get 10% discounts on whatever product you buy. Can you use Reflex image while purchasing so that I can get that discount price? And you can use the link in my bio to sign up so that you gain access to 15 trials so they can use it to practice. And if you like, you can go ahead and make payments later on. So welcome back. We are back to Photoshop right now. The next thing we need to do is for you to crop our picture. So I'll be using my crop tool, which is C. If you want to, you can you click C on your keyboard and it's going to take you directly there. Then I'm going to expand my picture to the way I want it to be. So I'm going to drag from the bottom and I'm going to drag from the top. Uh, you see the, the way I'm actually trying to expand it like this, it's actually still maintaining a fixed shape. As you can see, it's not deforming the shape for me. The reason is that I've already picked my preset, which is over here, which is 4 by 5 into bracket 8 by 10. So that's the reason why no matter how much I crop it, it's going to remain the same exact width I want it to be. So I'm going to drag from the bottom also again and I'm going to do what I'm going to click on my enter key. Next thing I want to do right now is to duplicate my background layer by clicking on Ctrl J. If you're using a MacBook command J on your keyboard. Command J on your keyboard. So the next thing you need to do right now is to select your subject out of the background. So to do that I'll click my quick selection tool and I'm going to click on select subject and wait for it to load up. So it what it did is that it's only selected the subject for me, it did not select part of the chair. So I'm going to select the, add the chair to the selection by doing what? Clicking either my polygonal axle tool or clicking on addition on the quick selection tool. So I'm going to scroll over the area I want to add to the selection, as you can see, and it's going to add all that for me. So I'm going to scroll down and perfect the selection myself. I'm going to add, click on polygonal axle tool. So what I'm trying to see so far is to make sure you know how to separate your subject from the background perfectly. If you know how to do that, I don't think you have any issue manipulating pictures. As you can see right now, I'm going to go to the other side also again. I'll do the same thing there. Fast forward this process. See you guys at the end. As you can see right now, I'm totally done with the selection. Next thing I need to do is just to do what? Right click on it and I'm going to create a feather. Under my feather, I'm going to make sure it's two pixels and I'm going to click on OK. Then once I'm done with the feather, next thing I need to do is just to click, click, click on my max tool which is over here. Once I click on it, what we do right now is separate our subject from the background. Look at the before, look at our subject standing alone on the separate background. So I'm going to turn this off back right now. Then next thing I need to do right now is to go to file under file. I'm going to go to place embed. I'm going to click on it. Then I'll go to where my files are located, which is the value I want to make use of right now. And I'm going to drag it straight into Photoshop. So if you want to know how I generate the background, I dropped a video earlier on detailing on how I do create the background using prompts using lenodo.ai it's free of charge i edit i collect i collected all this background free of charge generated everything myself using lenodo ai so you can just go and watch my previous video on how to generate background yourself instead of you buying them so you can generate it yourself and get nice background out of it if you watch the video to this point in time that means you're loving my tutorial so the only thing you can do to support me right now is just to click on the subscribe button and also drop a like. And you also have a question, you can also drop a comment. You subscribing, you liking my video is going to make YouTube recommend my videos to others. And that's going to encourage me to create more videos like this for you guys to learn from. And note, I will also be dropping so many files that you guys can download for free. Files you need to be getting for premium. Each like count, each subscription counts. So I'll just go to the file manager on where the file is located. I'm going to scroll down. 
and pick out i'll pick out the file i want to make use of for this particular video so i think this is the file here is one over here and i still have like other two but let's use this one right now i'm going to click on place and i'll wait for it to load up so you can see right now it already placed the background for me but it's not getting to the head of where i want it to be so i'm going to expand this till i see fits then i'm going to drag it till i see fits you can see right now once i'm done i'll click on my ok and wait for it to load up and boom our picture is already looking very very pink and nice but the issue we're having right now is there's no footer shadow for the chair and any other thing we have here. So that's what I'm going to sort out now. So turn off the background you just brought in and go to your background layer again. Pick your lasso tool. Make sure you're feathering with by, by 20. Then scroll over the area where the initial shadow is. I'm going to scroll over it like this. I'm going to scroll over it like this. As you can see. I'm going to do what? Ctrl J on it. Then I'm going to drag it on top of the background I just brought in. I'm going to on the background. But as you can see, it's not looking very, very nice. So what you just need to do right now is to change the blend mode from normal, bring it down to multiply. But we still have an issue right now. It's still showing that we brought something in. So Ctrl L on it. Under this, from this right hand side arrow, drag it down until you're no longer seeing those whitish stuff. Drag it very well. And also under the black, drag it down to darken the background for you a little bit. Click on OK. Then Ctrl U on it. Under the saturation, drag it to zero. Click on OK. And boom. Our shadow is already there and our picture is looking very very nice as we want it to be. Next thing we need to do, as you can see the background has a reflection. So we need to create the reflection of ourselves also. For you to do that, this layer, this is your subject layer, duplicate it by clicking on Ctrl J. The one below, right click on it, create to smart object, convert to smart object and click on OK. Wait for it to load up, then right click on it again, go to what? edit content look for where edit content is click on edit content zoom out go to what go to edit under it go to edit under go to image under image look for rotation and flip vertical as you can see it's going to turn it upside down then control s on it wait it to save finish before you go back to your document close it up so right now if you are to go to your previous document as you can see it's already upside down Ctrl T on it right now, then drag it down to where you want it to be. So here is where I want it to be. I'm going to adjust it like this. I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to adjust it like this. And I'm going to click on my OK. Then I'm going to do a reduce the opacity till I see if it reduce the opacity. Then the next thing I'll do right now is it's actually no other balance, and I'm going to adjust it. Ctrl T again. I'm going to adjust it to where it's supposed to be. Bring it up a little bit, adjust to where it's supposed to be. Click on OK. I'm going to clean part of it off because it's not looking all that realistic. I'll create a max on it. Pick my normal brush. Make sure the color is on black. And I'm going to scroll over the area that is still showing where we don't want it to show. Very, very simple and straightforward. Just reduce the opacity again till you see fit. And boom. You just need to color grade your picture and export it. Then you are good to go. So if this video helps, don't forget to drop a like. Someone out there might be in need of this video. See you guys in my next video tutorial. Reflex out.